Hello, my name is Maria. Welcome back to my channel here at Woodhaven Studios. Today I'm going to show you how to do a parallel pour, but I'm going to mix up the background half and half in black and white. So just now I'm preparing the canvas by coating half of it across the diagonal width black paint. This is to create a wet surface so that when I pour the coloured paint on it has uh, ease of passage across the canvas and it doesn't catch. So the other half of the canvas I'm going to coat in white paint. So you can see me just putting some paint on and we'll spread it out in a minute with a palette knife and just give a nice coating of wet pouring paint acrylics across the canvas. Okay. Hmm. Now I'll just use the palette to spread the paint to make sure that it's quite wet. It's very warm here today in Cal and the paint can dry out quite quickly, so I'm going to work as quickly as I can. Okay, that's that side of the canvas quite well covered. Just gently spreading the paint using the palette knife. I have a second one here to use with the white. I want to avoid mixing the black and white if at all possible. So again, just spreading a nice layer of white across the canvas so the canvas is wet, as I said, so that the paint can flow smoothly. I think I need a little more white paint there. Just add some from my larger container. As you can see, I reuse my washing up liquid bottles when I have prepared my paint mixes. The mix I use is a combination of PVA glue water and acrylic paint. It gives a good consistency for pouring and it also ensures the paint doesn't dry out too quickly to allow for the paint to run as I tip the canvas. Okay that's a good coating of white and I'll just fill in those gaps between black and white there. This again is another re re recycled uh, bottle, it's from um, an old pack of hair dye. I find the nozzle at the top being narrow is very useful for accurately put, laying down paint on the canvas. So there I have the canvas covered in both black and white acrylic pour paint. So I've decided today I'm going to use some fiery colours. I'm just going to layer them up here in the glass. I'm going to start with red. The wee glasses are ones that came from desserts I bought and they're quite useful because I can use them and then wash them out and reuse them. So it prevents me using plastic and adding to landfill. Just add a little black in there against the red. I'm going to add some orange. Just adding a black between just kind of defines the colours when you pour them. I find that I'm adding some white to the orange. I tend to keep white and red a little bit away from each other because the red tends to bleed into the white and create a kind of a pinkish hue. And unless that's what you're looking for, <laughs> you want to keep them a little separate. There's the yellow. <coughs> and just a little black into the yellow for contrast. And then my signature little piece of gold. Um, I like adding a little gold into most of my pores. It's not always obvious when it's being poured but when the paint dries it gives a very nice kind of fine lines of gold with the sheen. It's, it's quite pretty. That wee bottle just refused to open so I'm going to go for my other one. There we go. That's a little over the top. 
that should be about right to coat the canvas. So I have orange, yellow, red, white and black and gold in the glass. Now the one thing to remember when pouring is the glass, um, you know, the layers in the glass, what went in last will come out first. So the red is on the bottom, so that will pour out after the yellow. So I'm going to start on this, the white side <coughs> and hope to get the red pouring out when I reach the black side of the canvas. So just little diagonal pours parallel to each other. Nice parallel lines. You can see initially the black and the gold and then the yellow coming through and some orange. Little lines of black see the black coming down through the center there. See the orange coming in a bit more strongly. It's interesting to note <coughs> when you see the black and yellow together, uh, you tend to get a shade of green being produced as well. You probably see it better when I stretch the paint out later. You can see the red coming through quite strongly then. So as I said, the last color out the last color into the the first color into the glass is the last color out. Okay, just use up some more of the red there. And another wee parallel line or two. There we go. Now I'm just leave the glass to one side. So that's the basic pour. <coughs> now what we're going to do going to tilt the canvas to bring the colours to the edge. I don't aim to leave a lot of negative space in this one. I'm aiming to cover the canvas in the, the colours I've poured from the glass. So that's coming up to the edge there at the corner. I'm going to tilt and just take it back into the centre <coughs> and just turn that there so you can see. And slowly, you can see the paint starting to slowly come down towards the, the, the corner. And then take the bulk of the paint back into the center. And now I'm going to pour in the direction of the parallel lines. <coughs> Just take your time and enjoy. It just flows slowly across. You can see some of it starting to go over the edge here the yellow and black, that's fine. I'm going to take it back in the other direction now, stretch it out. And of course in my haste to enjoy a pouring session I again have forgotten to wear my gloves <laughs> so I'm going to end up with my fingers coated in paint. Now that has stretched nicely over there, the yellow particularly. You're going to go back in the other direction and take the paint over the edge of the canvas on this side. But again, slowly. If you attempt to pour too quickly, very often things go slightly askew. And the aim is to keep as, the paint on the canvas to allow for it to be poured in the opposite direction as well. So not to lose too much on one side. There we go, it's paint is starting to flow over as you can see side of the canvas there nicely, nicely covered in stripes. The yellow end is looking well. <coughs> My hands are quite coated but however uh, the end, <coughs> the black end where the red is needs to be just stretched a little more. So we will try and bring that over. You can see the sun is coming in through my skylight and leaving a shine on the canvas. And here we go. It's slowly moving across. You can see the reason why the wet layer underneath is needed, otherwise the paint would catch on the dry canvas and it wouldn't flow so easily. I'm just bringing it nicely to the edge. And it should tip over now in a minute. There we go. Mm -hmm. and a little more up near the top 
with the red. It's a slow process, but quite an enjoyable one. I find it very relaxing. And you can see little drips of wet paint catching on the, the tray below. So when I'm working on these small canvases, what I use beneath me is a, a plastic tray, which I get from um, deals, usually, um, and a cake cooling rack. Now the cake cooling rack is very useful when I finish the painting to leave it sitting on for two reasons. One, it doesn't it means the paint doesn't stick huge, hugely to it. But secondly, it allows air underneath the painting to allow it to dry. Now I'm just going around the edges to find any places that the paint hasn't covered. And use my fingers a little bit here. <coughs> As they're already covered in black. <laughs> to cover those those wee caps. I'll just give them a dry. We cloth here somewhere. And I'll just use the, the wee bottle again to, to get all those those little bits that weren't quite covered. So this is the side of the canvas that the black was laid down on, so just get those few little bits. Corners tend to be problematic at times when it comes to being sure that they're covered in paint. And I'm going to turn it now and see. And the other side now needs a little bit of white, just to complete it. Very often when you add the wee bit of white to the side, it will pull the, the, the paint down so that you get the stripes continuing over the edge. But this has covered quite well, so just the edges to do now. There we go. Oh, I'm quite pleased with that, I must say. Nice bright colours, quite cheerful. Uh, I'll have to go and wash my hands in a minute. But yeah, that's um, how to do a parallel pour. Um, if there is anything you would like me to demonstrate on the YouTube channel, just leave it in the comments below. If you like the video, do subscribe, hit the notification bell, and give me a like. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. I haven't thought of a name for this yet. Perhaps if you want to suggest something in the comments. That would also be very nice. Bye-bye. See you next time.